Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. Chat, it is May 22nd. I am in the ATL. I've been here for like, I think like four or five days, honey. Having a ball, having a great time. I love Atlanta. Atlanta is literally like my second slash third home. Sometimes I think LA is my second and then Atlanta is my third. But now I'm starting to think Atlanta is my second and LA is my third, okay? Um, Just shout out to all the tea sippers I've been running to out here. Y'all are so sweet. I mean, the hugs. The one girl almost broke down crying in front of the crab shack. It was so nice meeting you. I'm so glad that me as a person, as a human being, you know what I'm saying? I'm touching people. And that means more to me than any type of validation from any social media platform. Um, I've just had a ball out here. And, you know, Atlanta is just wonderful. It's hot. It's a lot hotter here than in Minnesota. But you know what I mean? I'm enjoying the weather. So I am back with another podcast. We got to talk about some things, you know. I miss y'all. We got to talk about a lot of stuff. Um, Particularly, it looks like another, you know, conscious, you know, pro-black social media icon, I guess you could call him. My son is going through a lot of censorship right now. And Uncle Snoop is blasting Instagram. So we're definitely going to get on that. I also want to remind you guys that my event is June 10th at the Epicenter. So I did the walkthrough. It is beautiful. I've done a lot of walkthroughs at the different places where I'm hosting, you know, my party and stuff like that. So it's it's going to be epic. And I hope you guys join me for a live taping of Tea Time Unfiltered. Um, y'all are going to have fun. I'm going hard. I'm putting a lot into this. And this is mainly like a treat for my supporters and for people who've been rocking with me, you know, who've seen me elevate from sitting on my bed doing commentary to not being able to afford something as luxurious as the epicenter to do my show. And I just can't wait to just share this experience with y'all. Um, it's been very stressful planning this and keeping it secret for the past few months, but it's all coming together and I just can't wait to see you guys and feel y'all's energy. If y'all love my live stream shows, y'all are definitely going to love seeing me live in my element. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about this situation. So if you guys don't know, my son took to his social media page um, on Friday. He was highly upset and basically he showed a screenshot where it says he's blocked from Instagram. It says, blocked from sharing live video. Posts from your account have recently been removed for going against community guidelines. So live video sharing has been temporarily blocked. Has been temporarily blocked. My son, the general, then goes on to say this. This is so whack. Shake my head. No real reason at all. I shared a clip of the white supremacist saying, sorry, no shots, nothing. It was removed and my lives are blocked. Instagram ain't for us. Then Snoop Dogg comes under there and he says, fuck Instagram. They're a part of America with three K's. So this is causing a lot of controversy, you know, and what I find interesting about this situation is that it's always fun and games and it's always ignored when it's when it's affecting other people. People never take it seriously until their faves are now affected. Let me bring y'all back to March 2022, because y'all know my ass. Okay, I keep receipts, honey. Who remembers back in March when I did a whole video on YouTube, putting my platform at risk to basically call out the CEO of Instagram? Because remember, Instagram wanted to get themselves involved in this whole Russia situation. A lot of American companies decided to involve themselves in something that really had nothing to do with them. And now the chickens are coming home to roost. You see Netflix's stock is going down. They don't block the whole country of Russia. They don't lost a lot of subscriptions. I mean, Russia's a big ass country. There's a lot of damn Russians watching Netflix. So they don't lost that whole population of people. And Netflix is struggling right now. Instagram tried to jump in the fray and said that they were going to, you know, um, block uh, Vladimir Putin and, and, you know, allow the Ukrainians to, to send threats. Remember, Facebook and Instagram, they were okay with Ukrainians sending threats to Russians. And a lot of Russian citizens were upset, like, no, we don't agree with this war. 
you know, we're not behind our president, but there's not a lot we can do and say because, you know, they can be hurt. And I found it very interesting that they were willing to promote violence on their platform when it came to this. But let somebody say something about Asian people. Oh, my gosh. Mark Zuckerberg about to block you for Asian hate. And I'm not saying people should be saying anything, you know, derogatory towards Asians. That's not what I'm saying. But I noticed that if it's towards a protected group that they like, oh, you're going to be blocked. You're going to be thrown in Facebook jail, Instagram jail, things like that. But they were OK with the Ukrainians sending threats you know, to Russian people and saying stuff like that, which is very interesting because again, that is the direct violation of Instagram policy. I, as a person on Instagram using their platform, I'm not allowed to send somebody threats, but they were okaying it as long as it was towards the Russians. So Vladimir Putin, he saw this. He said, hold up. You're not about to have your people. You know what I'm saying? Y'all Ukrainian Instagrammers throw threats at me. My government and my citizens, you got us fucked up, okay? So what he did, because I've been telling y'all, they got their own little internet. They're not worried about the global web. They got their own internet in Russia. They've been working on this shit for years, okay? I told y'all that back in January. Y'all be thinking I'd just be reaching. So he said, come, you know, I forgot the date, child, like March 20th. I'm pulling my entire country off of this global internet. Y'all got us messed up. We are leaving. I'm blocking every Russian from Instagram and Facebook. So now when the Instagram CEO or the head of Instagram, Adam Mossery, when he heard this, he was upset. He condemned Russia for blocking their social network. Child, he was crying tattoo tears and Coke bottle glasses was getting fogged up. So I'm, let me go ahead and, you know, refresh y'all's memory. This is what Adam had to say back in March. Check this out. The Russian here. government has decided to block Instagram in Russia cutting off millions of people from loved ones and friends around the world. We know that over 80% of people in Russia on Instagram follow an account from outside of Russia. The situation is terrifying and we're trying to do all that we can to help keep people safe. We've made encrypted chats available to everyone in Ukraine and Russia. And we've encouraged everyone in the region to make their accounts private and we've made it so that you cannot see who another account follows for safety reasons. We've also pledged $15 million to humanitarian efforts, and we've seen 750,000 people on the platform raise over $30 million for similar efforts. We've also created an information hub for people in the region, even if they move from country to country, to make sure they have access to good information and context. There's more information available in my link in bio, and if you're interested in donating, I encourage you to donate to Save the Children, International Rescue Committee, or CARE. All amazing organizations doing important things right now. All right. So y'all just saw what Adam had to say. And so Vladimir Putin, he literally cut off 80 million Russians from Instagram. Okay. That's a lot of people. I don't know 80,000 people, let alone 80 million. That's a lot of people. So this definitely affected Instagram because, you know, Instagram, they need that traffic. They want to run ads, you know, that that's affecting their bottom line. So when he came out and he called them out for this, I thought it was extremely rich that the same man who has blocked many people, including my black ass from from live streaming. I've been shadow banned on Instagram. I've gone through it on social media. Y'all know that for simply speaking my truth. OK, I found it very rich that he was upset that he now was being blocked. And I talked about this in March. I did a whole breakdown. And of course, that video didn't get as much traffic, quote unquote, as some of my other videos. Because again, anytime you're speaking about real world issues or things that really affect people, half the folks ain't going to watch it because it's not tied to, you know, celebrity news and gossip. But for the folks who watched it and liked it, thank you guys for supporting the real content. Um so I, I talked about this and I found it very rich. So I'm going to go ahead and play y'all a flashback of what I had to say to Adam back then. Y'all go ahead and check this out. So what's very interesting to me about all of this drama that's going on is it's the hypocrisy for me. As someone myself who has been shadow banned by Instagram, who have had posts removed, um, face from Facebook, Instagram, shadow banned on YouTube, I find it very rich that these same platforms who have banned people for lesser offenses are now in their feelings. Now, this is the same platform which a year ago, if you called C-19 the Wuhan virus, you are automatically banned. If you said that that virus was created in the lab, you were labeled a conspiracy theorist and your posts were removed. 
But then when it was convenient and the information came out that it was created in a lab in Wuhan, then it was okay. Now, what I find very interesting is that Facebook has a nerve to encourage their users to post violent messages towards Russia. I find it very funny that when it's convenient for these platforms, they're ready and willing to encourage hate speech. I have seen black people on TikTok literally removed and shadow banned for the littlest things unjustly, no explanation. I have seen hashtags like BLM, dark skin, and melanin suppressed in all algorithms, not just TikTok. Don't let them fool you. They're suppressed on Instagram and other apps as well. Like I said before, me along with so many other people have had to create multiple accounts due to being shadow banned. I was literally unable to live stream on my Instagram account for almost a year simply for posting what was going on in my city during the George Floyd riots. So in my personal opinion, like I said on Instagram, I feel absolutely no ways about this nonsense. Not only do they treat black creators on social media like crap. But anybody who doesn't agree with their narrative, they're automatically silenced, shadow banned and removed. This goes for truth or channels. This also goes for conservatives. I may not agree with everything that conservatives say, but I do feel like they have the right to state their opinion, just like people who are not conservative. But we see how these social media apps play games. I don't feel bad for Instagram. All right. So you guys just heard my response to the situation concerning Adam. And I spoke out back then about how this not only affected people like me, but many people, other black people who may not have a huge following, even conservatives who have a big following have been censored by social media. And I don't believe in like, you know, censorship. It has to make sense. I'm not saying you should be out here just saying whatever and threatening people. I don't agree with that. But when it's somebody just speaking their truth and they're bringing receipts, I don't think it's fair to censor them. Now, the reason why my son got censored, it's very disturbing. If y'all don't know the little white boy, his name is Peyton Genderon. I believe that's how you say it, child. He is a little white supremacist kid. He dressed himself up in army gear and went to top supermarket in Buffalo, um, New York, and just got to shooting and killing people. And he was mainly aimed at killing black people and minority people. And there's a disturbing video where he's getting ready to shoot this white man. And he realizes at the last second he's white. And this man sounds terrified. Like you can tell this man saw his life flashing before his eyes. And the man yells, help. And he goes, sorry. Meaning, oh, shit, you're white. I don't mean to, you know, I'm not trying to kill you. I'm going to play y'all the audio. It was hard to find this video because they're scrubbing it off the internet. I have the video. I don't post everything. You know, I download a lot of shit. I don't repost it on Instagram, Twitter. You know what I mean? Just because they, they just act very funny. So a lot of stuff I just keep for my edification. So I'm going to play y'all the audio of this situation here. And in that audio, you're going to hear this white man basically say, help. He sounds so scared. And the Buffalo shooter says, sorry. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.